I get asked all the time, why does Duke have a lemur center? And it's a great question. It is, in a sense, an accident of history, and it was inspired leadership, I think, on the part of Duke to invest in that first little idea. The idea came with Peter Klopfer when he was out here studying animal behavior. He established a collaboration with John Butner Janisch, who was studying lemur behavior. Peter said, bring the lemurs down to Duke. We've got this amazing facility out in the woods and we can, you know, study their behavior and do this really advanced behavioral research. And that's how it all started to think nostalgically about those quiet, peaceful early days when nobody was out here but the lemurs and me. We had no, no visitors. We did not provide tours. Uh, we didn't advertise the presence of our animals or our work. It was much more of a sort of a secret place back in those days. And so now we have a really open front door and, and also all the public. I think that would be a big surprise for Peter to see how many people we have coming in from, you know, school children up to, you know, grandmothers and everything in between. The advances in technology make it possible to do research we couldn't have done. This is work that we couldn't have done back in the 60s. We do not do invasive studies of any sort, but the capacity to get some really amazing data on brain structure and, you know, you name it, biomechanical forces, all of that is has been made possible by advances in uh, robotics and in imaging and in bioinformatics. It really changed with Ann Yoder. I think I was a sophomore or a junior, so we came out here on a field trip and it was a very different place. I mean, it wasn't nearly as pretty <laughs> as it is now, but the animals are so spectacular and diverse and amazing. Um, so we came out here and I saw the animals and I learned that they came from only one island on the whole planet and I saw the diversity and Bam! That was it. I was hooked. The outreach efforts that Anne has promoted contribute to the preservation of the habitat and of the animals of Madagascar, which not only is making enormous contribution to the ecology of Madagascar, but is also allowing our citizens, our local population, to play a role in preserving biodiversity. What we're trying to do is to work with Malagasy people to find other solutions than cutting down the forest to feed their children and to live a good life. So it's very much uh, a two-way street. What makes life better for the humans in Madagascar makes life better for the lemurs in Madagascar. I truly do wish that there was an opportunity for other centers like this to exist because we are uh, sort of a Noah's Ark for lemurs and multiple Noah's Arks would be a great thing to have. That being said, it is absolutely illegal to take wild-born lemurs out of Madagascar. Lemurs are critically endangered. We work very carefully with uh, the zoological community and other organizations that are interested both in research and in captive management of these precious animals and you know are also invested in seeing them Know, persist on into the future but uh, sadly it would be impossible to start a place like this from scratch. I think Duke is more and more known for having this very special place unique in the world and I just you know continuing to build a very happy and healthy staff you know using their creativity and their expertise to make for a better experience whether you be a undergraduate student or a kindergartner or you know a Nobel laureate that's what I want to see.